Welcome to my channel Sonal from USA. We are meeting after a long time but I have a very very interesting profile today. Aap soch rahe is it MS? No. MBA? No. Lawyer? No. Hai kaun wo? So chaliye milte hain hum log aaj ek unique personality se and his name is Ashik Sapkota. When you will meet him you will know which profession we are going to talk about today so let's meet ashik sapota i am very excited to meet him and i am sure you would also be excited to meet him ashik welcome to my channel sonal from usa and this is a channel all about education fun us living lifestyle so i normally you know take uh, meet lot of people who come here for masters or different kind of education in us and uh, you know while i interview them i learn a lot and of course viewers who are watching this learn a lot from them because they are also aspiring to come here you know to us so let's get started i have somebody very special as you can see he is from the aviation and he is aspiring and aspiring uh, you know pilot who is here for the uh, you know his uh, commercial pilot license uh, program his name is ashik sapkota and ashik is from japan so i have lot of questions and i'm sure viewers would also have lot of questions ashik so ashik welcome to my channel and i'm very excited i'm interviewing first time somebody who is going to take the commercial pilot license and i know there are many you know youngsters who inspired for this kind of you know profession so i'm really really excited to have you on my channel and please tell us something about yourself that was really thank you for inviting me yeah all the cinema my wa अमेरिकन <laughs> Okay. And after that, I went to Japan and did all of the question games to come here for my third time. Okay. So how did you like? Uh, you know, uh, you have visited India, Nepal, and Japan. So how did you mm -hmm. like the cultural differences? And how did you cope up with the Japanese culture? I know they are very polite, and uh, it's primarily Japanese everywhere, right? So how did you cope up with that? So yeah, I was born in Japan, and uh, when I first went to Nepal, it was like a uh, very much different because. Mm -hmm. uh, I found a lot of difference in uh, like uh, building areas, and it was a much more polluted city and uh, polluted place. And yeah, so Japan was very highly developed. And when I get uh, back to Nepal that first time, it was like uh, not that developed as Japan. So yes, uh, it was much different for me. Uh, the culture in Japan is uh, like very much different because. they have their own uh, tradition on type of uh, like uh, they don't uh, try to speak any other language they only speak uh, Japanese they don't want to bring any other language in the country wow yes. and uh, it was first uh, firstly i was not that much good in nepali and i couldn't speak properly and yes so, so now you are good in nepali so you can speak nepali yeah. language or kind of course so you know many languages now nepali english Japanese. Yes, okay. How about Hindi? Yes, sir. I can speak Hindi. Oh, okay. Okay, that's cool. So you can survive anywhere, basically. So, what yes, are the sir. procedures? And uh, did you complete your graduation, or it's like you did your uh, mm -hmm. high school or twelfth degree, and then you applied for this commercial license? So, is there a basic mm -hmm. requirement? Yeah, I did my graduation, and uh, I applied for this flight training, but. Uh, After finishing your tenth grade, you are uh, okay to uh, go for this training. Uh, the minimum requirement is that you need to be seventeen years old, uh, be good in English proficiency. But 
Um, the problem is that if you don't have uh, like um, high school degree, it will be harder for you. And uh, and starting from like uh, from the tenth grade, uh, because the uh, skills and knowledge you need to know for starting this uh, course is a bit a bit tough. So that's why I recommend to start in after graduating high school. Okay, when you say graduating yeah. high school, basically after twelfth. Yeah, from yeah, India yeah. standards, right? Okay. Yeah. So, is there any yeah. exam that you have to give before you come here for the, uh, you know, uh, for this kind of course? Yes, uh, obviously you need to be good in English because you are coming to USA for this training. But if you have uh, gone to other any other countries like Philippines, uh, I think you don't need. Uh, you you will need English, but uh, you don't have to go to English test. But if you want to come to USA, um, you should be able to speak, uh, read, write in English. You have to go do IELTS. Or doctors, but in my case, I have I had done uh, some other course in English, so I saw I showed my school, my friend school, that certificate, so I was okay with that. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, uh, is there any kind of academic exam like people come from masters mm -hmm. in say MS computers or something? They normally mm -hmm. give GRE or GMAT. Is there any kind yeah. of a exam that you have to give? There is no such uh, thing as exam. Uh, they will uh, go through your background and how 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 much degrees you have and how is your qualification. And they will have like an interview, like we are having right now. Oh, okay. And they will just yeah, they will just ask you many questions mm -hmm. and go through your background. The most hard part is after you come to the USA, it's hard. So you have to go through many things after you come to USA before. Uh, coming to USA, I think, yeah, if you are good with a degree, if you are good in English, if you know things, if you know what you are doing, mm -hmm. I think everything will be fine. So tell me, you were in Japan and mm -hmm. I have seen that you have exposed to Nepal and India. So why did you choose US for the commercial license uh, pilot program? Uh, I chose US because US has a very, very, very good history for navigation because you know because they have many many aircrafts and yes uh, and if you want to uh, work in Japan especially in Japan because I am planning to work in Japan I don't know what will happen in the future but if you want to work in Japan mm. the, you, they only accept the license uh, from USA which is Federal Aviation Administration License Federal Administration License okay so uh, this is FAA so okay. the license which we get in USA is FAA so it's authorized by FAA. So they only uh, Japan only has the uh, FAA license. So um, because the the alliance are same, uh, we do solo countries, and our flight trainings are same. So they only accept the license from the USA. So if I went to any other countries like Philippines, India, uh, for my flight training, it would be very hard for me for my conversion uh, to Japanese license. Okay, understood. Uh, yeah. But is there no course available in Japan? Yeah, there is, there is, there is a course available, but um, the thing is, it's very, very expensive to do your flight training in Japan. Okay. Uh, in comparison to any other countries. Oh, really? That's okay. It. Okay. Yeah, That's it's interesting. Like, I mean, normally, yeah. US is very expensive in terms of education or yeah, yeah. the tuition fees. True, uh, but like it's 60% or 70% more than US. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's really expensive. high. Okay. So, so that's why you chose USA for your commercial yeah. uh, pilot training. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, how did you go about finding this information about this training institute? Before coming to US, uh, I went to many, many uh, flying schools, and actually, I was uh, also planning to go to Philippines. Wow. But, okay. Uh, yeah, but uh, I don't want to like uh, say anything bad about the training in Philippines or uh, anything, but. Yeah, I find I found out that the training yeah, and if you do the license, uh, not only in Japan, most of the countries like uh, at right now are not uh, accepting that much that license for Philippines. So yes, after that, uh, I I just cancelled the plan of looking for Philippines, and after that, I started uh, looking for in the USA. So uh, when I went to know about the F1 and M1, I thought of going for F1 because. Who, who, who knows, uh, because I might change my plan, I, I might want to stay in the US and go. Like, I'm, I'm pretty to... sure you will change your plans. <laughs> <Very soon. laughs> I don't know what, what Okay. Yeah, so I was uh, I was looking for F1. So the school uh, who, which provides F1 visa mm -hmm. are 
प्लीज आई नो दैट एम वन इज नॉर्मली फॉर द ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम एंड आई सी लॉट ऑफ पीपल वॉन्ट टू कम हियर फॉर ट्रेनिंग ऑन एफ वन बट दे एक्चुअली गेट एक्सेप्टेड फॉर एम वन सो हाउ डिड यू मैनेज टू गेट एफ वन वीजा फॉर दिस ट्रेनिंग so like in aviation field in if you do uh, come from uh, come for um, M1 visa do, uh, you will finish your course get a certificate go back to your country if you come for F1 you can do a training go back or stay here and continue so yeah so i got to get F1 because i choose phoenix is aviation they provide F1 visa and because uh, they have made the training at academic process so it's like a campus not only a flight training we go to some ground classes and many other things that's why they pro- they can provide f1 visa so the thing i like about this school is that they provide f1 visa so that's why i was able to get the f1 visa okay okay yeah. so here comes the most interesting part mm, yes yes suspense yes. f1 visa mm. how was mm-hmm. your f1 visa interview and i know that you got 221g so please tell us about your f1 visa interview how did you prepare mm-hmm. for it because it's a very mm-hmm. different and niche area uh, yes. what was your preparation i was preparing for uh, like a few weeks uh, before going for the interview like it was uh, it, uh, it was like a hardest part of my life because i was so on nervous i didn't know what was going to happen and covid was there even if it's here right now but yeah everything was not normal So my embassy was uh, a bit far from my city, so I had to go there a uh, few days ago, and I stayed there. I was waiting for my interview. I just went. Which uh, Which city was your interview? So in Tokyo, Tokyo. Tokyo, Japan. okay. Yeah, and I went for my interview, and I was very nervous. Uh, and uh, many people who were in the line, everyone were getting uh, accepted because they were Japanese, also they had Japanese nationality. and i was happy uh, very happy with that because uh, the, i was going with the same person for my interview and just, i just wait, uh, wait for it and she asked me uh, many questions she went through uh, for, like why do you want to go to usa why do you say not uh, other countries tell me about school and she went through my bank details and after that everything i just uh, after one minute uh, like she told me that you should be in F1 visa, uh, M1 visa rather than F1 visa because this is a training program, and I was like, there was a sorry, a paper, letter paper, which was given from my school to me, and I showed them that, and she went inside for literally about eight minutes, and wow. I was ter- terrified, like, what's going wrong? <laughs> Everyone is coming and going in a minute, and I was standing up there for eight minutes. Eight minutes. Like. Yeah, that that eight minute was so long, so long. I could explain. Yeah, probably and like she, one hour. <laughs> yeah, and she came back and she told me that yeah, I think you should be in M1. So uh, I will give you this two two one G letter and send us a new identity. I was so shocked. I didn't knew anything about two two one G, and I, in the top of it, it was the refuse. I was like, I didn't knew the difference between refuse and rejected. I was like everything is gone and I'm rejected. I can't go, and I was very sad. I just came outside, and I uh, the first thing I did was I I uh, talked with my school, uh, my admission officer, and he told me that no way uh, we will uh, send the uh, new I-20 uh, to the embassy or we will uh, send the letter saying that uh, we provide a visa. Mm-hmm. So yes, so after I talked with my. Uh, admission officer i felt a bit relief but really really my heart was like so heavy at the moment I, and my family was uh, waiting me in the hotel and i, I didn't know what to do I, I, so i just drove around uh, like road for a few like a half an hour and i went to the hotel and they were excited for me and uh, yeah the thing was that i was uh, a bit confused in the shoes and rejected that's why i was waiting by that first How many days after, like your college submitted a letter to them yes. to the embassy, yes. and then in how many days they gave you F1 visa? So the thing was uh, when I uh, texted them, the, the uh, next day they just uh, sent the uh, mail to the embassy saying that we provide F1 visa, and we are this this this. We are having an academic program. We have done this for many years. We have many students here in F1. So after sending all the information. The embassy took uh, about two to 
say uh, two, two to three weeks. Wow. Uh, no, two weeks. Two yeah, weeks. We That's a long period. Weeks. That was very long for me. Like it seems very short if I say it right. Like two weeks. Ah, it's a short period. No, no, no. It was not. It really was not. It was like every day I would check my like status, visa status is in my phone, what's going on. And every day it was refused until one day it changed into administrative processing. And yeah, and after uh, it was changed to administrative processing, I got to know that it's very, uh, like it's going to be issued in few days because everyone told me about administrative processing. Because before uh, it used to be administrative processing at first and then uh, it will, it will be changed and issued, but now then if it says administrative processing, it's uh, likely to become you know, included. The good part was they kept my passport. If they had refused me, they would just send me and give uh, away my passport. And so yeah, they put my passport. Okay, so when you got your visa, what was your reaction? Oh my god, it was out of the world. Like uh, when, I, when it actually changed into issued, the first thing was my mom started crying. <laughs> my mom was crying because of happiness and uh, like the at the same time. Yeah, and my sisters, everyone were so happy, and we we had a blast that day. Mm -hmm. We yeah, we went outside and yeah, it was a very great moment for me. Great moment, great absolutely. Yeah. absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, congratulations. It's a great achievement mm -hmm. that you are here already uh, and I'm sure your yeah. parents are proud of you that you are doing this Thank course you. and I'm pretty sure it's a very difficult course. So we'll go through yeah. the details, you know, uh, we will get into more details now. Uh, so thank you for sharing your F1 visa experience. Uh, I'm sure people who are watching uh, would know yes, yes. and uh, may reach so out to you. The main thing is, mm -hmm. like, you should be patient in the time when they can give it to 2MG or if they give it to for a case, like, it's not in your hand, just be patient. I know it's very hard to become patient at the moment, but just just be patient. You can't do anything because everything is done by the embassy. Right. The thing you can do is to pray. Just pray, like everything is going to be good. So when you appeared for your F1 visa interview in the Tokyo consulate, yes, uh, your mm -hmm. interview was in which language? Oh, it was in, uh, we have to choose, uh, we can choose in the Japanese or English. I choose the English, so yeah, it was in English. Okay, so but you had an option to choose Japanese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, would you mind sharing little more information about this course, like uh, you know, what is the mm -hmm. curriculum and what is the fee structure and how easy? Yes, yes, obviously. Yeah, and uh, there are many schools who provide a uh, more cheaper, uh, cheaper course, like uh, for uh, about uh, 30, 40 percent lesser than what I'm doing right now. The thing is, uh, you need to book for a good aircraft, which is your flight. You need to have a good aircraft, a good maintenance, and yeah. So that's why I choose this school, this part play school. And the course for my, uh, up to my commercial is $50,000. And after that, I need to do multi-engine, and that, uh, that would cost $10,000 more. So it will be $60,000. And if you want to stop here, if you want to come here, and do the training, you should know that it will take you 20 to 25 more percent extra. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so it will take you 20 to 25 percent extra because you have to, uh, the, in the field, the fuel is not uh, included. So the fuel fee will be included. And if you have to go around, it, so if there is a particular student who could not do the thing in one time, so you have to go uh, around one, two times, uh, three times more, so you will end up paying more. So, yeah. So if you are a good student, you know what you are doing, you are perfect in anything, you will pay a 15 to 20 percent extra. But like if you end up there for more than part time period and if you had to do more training, you will end up paying a more amount of time. Basically yeah. additional fuel charges depending upon how mm -hmm. many rounds you have to take yeah. more, how yeah. fast you grasp and all that. Wow, that's yeah. very interesting. I mean, um, I didn't know about yeah, all this. So like, it's not fixed how much. So okay, understood. Will, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how easy or difficult it is to get the uh, loan from the banks for this kind of course? Yes. Uh, as much as I know, uh, it will depend on the country. So from where you are taking the loan from. Okay. So I was in Japan. Yes, it was uh, easy uh, to take the loan in Japan and they provide you uh, loan if you have a specific plan. After this course, this is what, two years course? 
yeah, it will take about 15 months to do it for okay. the commercial pilot. And after that, multi-engine, it will go up to two and five years. Multi-engine so is two to five years? No, no. After that, more five, six months. Five, six okay. months. And what is multi-engine exactly? Uh, so I will go from the base. Uh, so at first, you will get a student pilot license. So a student pilot license is uh, you will have a license to fly. Okay. You can instruct it and, and you, can, you, will, you will go to ground school. And after that, you will get a private pilot license in which you can become a pilot in command and fly a particular aircraft and with, uh, with their, they have associated. And after that, you will get commercial pilot license. And until private pilot license, you cannot get paid for flying. And after you get CPL, commercial pilot license, you can get paid for flying. So, yeah, when you do, uh, when you get up to uh, commercial pilot license, you will have 200 to 220 hours. So, yeah, most of the airline will uh, uh, accept you uh, in that flight hours. In India, uh, yeah, because many of the people here in Phoenix also, they go back after doing the CPL and apply for airlines in India. But uh, right now, because of the pandemic, everything is going slowly. And yeah, so that's why they continue doing this uh, multi-engine. And multi-engine is, uh, until CPL, uh, there is only single engine aircraft. And after mm, you do multi-engine, you can fly multi-engine aircraft. So that's the thing. So yeah, until multi-engine, if you do the multi, uh, do multi-engine, multi it will be good for you. Okay, understood. So it is provided to the same institute, multi-engine program as well? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, you can do up to CFI, it's a flight instructor program, so you can go up to there. So after that multi-engine program, you can apply to any airline directly or how does it work? So yes ma'am, uh, you can apply to the airlines. And, uh, so if you are from India, but, uh, you, you know, most of the people you go to, uh, will go to India. And uh, yeah, so if you want to stay in the US, U.S. will uh, want 1,500 hours. Um, most airlines will uh, like, uh, like like to have 1,500 hours. So for that, uh, many students do instructor program, flight instructor program, and build up flight hours teaching others, uh, our new students. So yes. So um, if you want to stay in U.S., yeah, you have to do. You have to go to instructor program. But if you want to go back to India, yeah, there in India they will hire you in 200 to 120 hours when like the uh, airlines in Vigo they will hire pilots in um, for, like in a very high quantity but mm -hmm. because of the COVID right now the airline industry is a bit um, grounded I guess uh, not uh, as good as it was back in 2019 okay. so, yeah. and I remember that this is your first time to US right Yes, yes, yes. So, different. so how how do you feel? I mean, I know that you stayed in Japan, but it's totally mm -hmm. different culture, right? Like Asian versus yeah, Western yeah. people call it. Mm -hmm. So, how do you find it, and how are you coping up with this culture, getting adjusted to the U.S. lifestyle here? Uh, at first, uh, the homesickness was there in me. It was there for like two weeks, no, two weeks, for one and two weeks. Yeah, it was a bit hard for me. Like I felt very like uh, sad and alone here. But yeah, gradually you uh, get used to it. And I like the, uh, the things like you know, comparison to Japan. It's very really big. So like everything you see here in the rules and everything are like big. And yes, that that um, that I like very much. And I'm staying here in Daytona, Florida. So there are many greeneries, and the weather is also good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's a very good thing okay. about this space. Yeah, I, I like um, it very much. So you have rented an apartment now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, this is my apartment right now, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's like any other student, you have to have your journey. You have to choose your apartment. Mm -hmm. So you did that after yeah. coming here? You stayed for yeah. a week in the hotel and then you chose your apartment or you chose everything when you were in Japan? Yeah, I went to many apartments. Uh, I have, have shared my room with a friend that we there in Phoenix, so we do live here. So we do went to the uh, apartments here in US, and yeah, we found this grey night. It was very good, and we liked it. And we just uh, went through it, and we just uh, came here and do, uh, do the paperwork. And there was a thing uh, like they don't pay cash or they don't take the card. We have to do the money order, and that was very hard for me at first because. 
at that time we didn't have the car we had to go to walmart many different places mm-hmm. and yeah so at first it was very very hard and like now it's very very easy okay okay and how yeah. hard or easy it was to find an apartment because i know you that normally you need a car so without yeah. car finding an apartment how was your journey yeah it was very hard man. yeah without a car it is very very hard right yeah. so how are yeah. you coping up living there you know without a car no man actually after getting here like i had to go to school i had to do many stuff and right now the other there is no bus also no transportation and every day taking over it will approximately like i uh, take me to very high budget because <laughs> uh, every day they're taking over it to be very expensive so i thought of getting a car and i just went for it and bought, I bought a car car man. okay okay well that's yeah, a good investment yeah. because you cannot survive without a car in many places yeah, especially really florida i know that there is no transportation yeah in florida without a car so yeah so at first uh, i was not thinking about that but when i got here like we can't even walk in the street like there is highway so so it is very very hard so i thought without a car it would be very hard and i went for driving test i passed it i got my license wow you're I, super fast Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just got my I passed my written test and my driving test uh, just in two weeks, and I got the license. So I didn't wait for the car; I just went for it. Okay, okay, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, that's a, that's really good. But as a student, you get the you can uh, get the driving license. You don't need an assistant for this. If I had uh, like uh, I don't know, if I had license from my country, it would be very better for me. So I only had bike license. I didn't took car license over there because in Japan you will have transportation everywhere. Like uh, the car is not mandatory. So yeah, in here, car is mandatory. So yeah, I had to go. So yeah. that's why I had to do the written test, uh, driving test, everything. I twenty, I ninety four. Okay. And my leasing document. That okay. was that was it. Okay. Yeah. So now we are comfortable driving. Yes. At first, it was very hard, man. The lanes are different. <laughs> I always used to end up going to another place when I was trying to roam around in my apartment, and gradually it became good. Okay, okay. So yeah. how did you go about buying car? Because that is also a process, right? Without car, buying a car, it's a process. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, at first uh, I didn't meet anyone there. My brothers uh, in Japan, uh, they, uh, their friends contacted me saying that oh, we went to America, which place, which place, blah blah blah. And, They ended up uh, saying I have a friend there in Daytona, and like he was, uh, that's my uh, we got very close right now. He just he stays in Fort Lake, that's very close. So it was uh, like a very lucky moment for me. And after he told told me about me, the uh, that brother came to me and meet me, and he helped me a lot. Yeah, and that was like uh, I felt like meeting a god here <laughs> because when he came here at the first, if you don't know anyone. It's very very difficult. And the, yeah, best part was I could speak my language, so that's why that was very very hard, very very great moment. So yeah, absolutely. For, and for that's why I asked this yeah. question because it is very difficult, especially in mm. the places where there is no car. And if you do not have mm. a car, buying first car itself is a challenge because mm. most of yes. the uh, dealers would be a little bit far. You know, you cannot just walk. Mm. Otherwise, you yeah, have to yeah, stick yeah. to Uber or some you know kind of a cab and then yeah. go there, right? And the distances are very far here, so it's mm-hmm. not very uh, cheap option to take yeah. a cab and go. So good that you bought a car. Which car you got now? Yeah, I have Nissan Altima. Okay, that's a good car. Now I want to know about your experience. Now that you're doing this commercial pilot, uh, mm-hmm. you know, training, uh, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that they have started flying after a few days, right? Mm-hmm. So, yes, yes, yes. so what was your first feeling when you started and you went into the air? <laughs> mm-hmm. That was the best feeling I've ever had. I like I was very scared and. Like about the career uh, in the, the field of uh, like pilot aviation, but when I did my first flight, everything became very good. Yes, I felt really really good when I like left the ground and went to the sky. Yeah, so it was very great moment. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah, you were not scared. No, no, no. Actually, I was not scared at all. Yeah, actually, I was very much enjoying it. Okay. Very really great moment. Okay, I'm. I'm pretty sure I would get scared. <laughs> In the training institute, like how many months have you been here? It's been one and a half months. One and a half month. Okay, so what is yeah. your flying experience now in one and a half month? How many hours? <laughs> yeah, I I have flown for ten hours. Ten hours. Uh, yeah, ten hours, and uh, yeah, it is a very great experience, man. And uh, uh, now I have to do the maneuvers, and I have to go for take off landing, traffic practice, many things to learn. And the most hard part is we have to study very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hard work, study, and the first thing is the private pilot life is not the hardest part. So you have to be very much. This is like the best which you are building for your career. So mm -hmm. you have to be very, very much into it. Everything you have to study because it's not like uh, any other studies. Because if you don't study today, you have to apply it for flying tomorrow. So you have to study. It. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. So do this? Yeah. Do they teach all of this kind of theory in the classroom first, and then you yeah, study, yeah. and then next day you apply immediately for flying? Yeah, yeah. Just we study it for. At first, we had the ground school before we fly. Fly. We knew uh, we had to go through many things about the aircraft, how it flies, mm -hmm. and yeah. So when I was studying that, I didn't knew there was so many things we have to know about the aircraft, like uh, really many things we have to know, like it, uh, how it flies, and the what are parts of it, and what ha like what part does what, and everything. Yeah. So we learned that for a few weeks, and after that, uh, there is an instructor. And my, I have my own instructor who will teach me uh, oral also and to fly also. So yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So every student will have individual instructor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so every student will have an instructor. So how many students are there normally in one class? Before the COVID, there used to be sixty uh, student in a batch, but now because of the COVID, we only have five. So it's very really less now. Okay. So there would be yeah. good concentration and attention yeah, yeah, to yeah. you yeah, for yeah, the yeah, yeah. okay that's but that's drastically thing. reduced huh? from 60 to 5 is like yeah, yeah. almost uh, the one you know. who are doing a commercial right now like today they feel about their back they had 60 55 students and now we don't have any but that's a good thing uh, also because you also told that you will get attention so. correct correct that's right yeah. that's right so do you get any kind of a scholarship for these programs no man. no 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 if you are no no if you are an american also if you want uh, they will give you a scholarship in like in the ground class over oral but not in the flying. okay because is there any upper limit upper age limit to learn this lower limit i understand that you need to be like uh, 17 years mm -hmm. right you said sure. So like to fly the main car, uh, you have to go through many things after you come here in the USA. You have to do a medical test, um, first class medical test. So if anything is wrong with your health, you cannot fly. So the thing is that. And the second thing is you have to go through PSA background check. So they will check you, the airport department. You have to go to airport, airport of the USA uh, and you have to go to your and everything. And they will check you uh, before from 10 years ago. So they will check you everything and your background and where you have been and everything and if you have also you should also pass that and after that you will also have English proficiency here so if you should be good in English if you are not in good in English you have to again go through many courses and yeah uh, to, uh, I think you can fly till uh, 60 I think I am not sure about that you okay yeah, as a commercial pilot and I think for the training field also you can do the training but you need to be free. That's the thing. So there are two two types of person. Like there are person who wants to fly to have fun, they have they want to get their own aircraft, like the small aircraft like this one saying do. So they will buy it and have the it in their own house and they want to fly it. So they they can get private pilot license at any way. So that's so when you said that they do a lot of things after you come here like medical mm -hmm. test and the background check so if there are so many background checks and if somebody does not clear that that means they cannot continue this training program mm, yes ma'am if you cannot pass the background check and medical check you are not eligible for that training okay okay so so, so most of the people do their uh, um, medical check 
in the home country, I also did that. But how about the background check? Like you said, TSA does it, right? So that happens only yeah. here. Yeah, that that only happens here. So you have to pass that. If you do, do not pass that, if they have anything suspend, they also ask me questions because they had uh, they did not accept my at first. I accept my like uh, document at first. They asked me if you were born in Japan, why didn't you took the nationality of Japan? They asked me that. That was a very small question because if someone has a bigger issue, they will be end up not passing them. So I have to say that only born in uh, only being born in Japan won't give you a nationality. You have to apply for that. Uh, did you take any kind of guidance, you know, to apply for F1 or to apply for this institute for this uh, course? Did you take any counselor mm -hmm. or like normally people take counselor, do write lot of things, paperwork or something? Did you take any help? Yeah, everyone get amazing this part. I did everything by own, by my own. Wow. I did my uh, starting my school and my like every every single process. I did it in, by my own. I didn't went to any institute. What is the kind of documentation that you have to do when you apply here? Well, the first thing is you have to search for a school that is a very hard part. You don't know anything, literally anything about US, where it is, how it is. And you went through it, it will take you a long time, long, long time of like research. And after that, you will end up getting a school, you apply for it, they will um, mail you, you, you mail them the documents, you go through uh, many documents, fill up, you have to fill up a long document uh, from the schools, and after that, they will try send you like 20, and after that, it's the embassy process. The embassy process is very uh, also very long. Ah, yeah. DS-160 and many other processes. Does it involve a lot of documentation like write about yourself, essay, statement of mm -hmm. purpose or something like that? It was like mostly, mostly involved in the interview, so those questions, right? Yeah, so uh, in, the, in the documents, we didn't have to fill that much. But we had to fill about ourselves, our background, our studies, our everything. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you went to this it will be easy for you because they know about the school. They would do everything for you. Okay. Yeah, but that, that was not. And how long this interview happens uh, when they do it from institute to you? And is it like a video call interview, like a Zoom call interview? Yeah, they just uh, talk to you uh, and uh, yeah, they ask you many questions. So for me, it was like about uh, 10, 15 minutes. Okay. So this time, yeah, just we talked about it, and I also asked the many questions about schools, and yeah, it was. Okay. It and was what good. kind of questions they asked you? Yeah, so about me, about my background, why choosing the field of aviation, and uh, where I'm at from, my education background, and yes, pretty much, and why did you choose our particular university? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those okay. Answers. So even I have this question, why did you choose mm. aviation industry? Any background or do you have anybody in your family, you know, who is a pilot that you've seen uh, mm -hmm. that, you, yeah. that inspired you to become a pilot, commercial pilot? Yes, becoming a pilot was a thing since when I was a child and that was because I was traveling from Japan to Nepal and when I was doing that, I, I went to the side of the cockpit and I really wondered what was inside that because I was very curious mm -hmm. and at that time they used to show you inside the cockpit but and yeah the pilot so uh, when there was a pilot standing and he was just smiled at me and showed me this open the door and showed me the cockpit and he just uh, went like this in my hair with my hair he just pulled with my hair and said you also want to become a pilot in Japanese and yeah so that day I felt very good and I really wanted to become a pilot because the field of fire aviation is very much different than on any other thing. I do, I am not a person who likes to be in the same desktop, same surrounding every day, same building. We go to same place, we talk to same person, same laptop. I just want to be in every different part of the world every day and look different views, from different perspectives. Yeah. So that's why. Uh, Okay. Or I'm sure you will have breakfast in Japan and you know lunch in <laughs> Italy and then dinner in yeah. US in few years. I hope everything goes well. Absolutely. So after you get your commercial pilot mm -hmm. license and then you also yes, do your commercial instructor's course and you are eligible to apply. And if my you get absorbed in any airline, 
what is the starting salary for the pilot this also depends on the airline which we get so it also depends on which airline we go here in the rest of the regional airlines will pay you about five thousand dollars when you get into it and if you are getting into the US regional airlines like Delta yeah, American Airlines they will pay you a good amount of money the starting salary will be like ten thousand dollars and we will be ending up to thirty thousand dollars a month for a captain wow yeah, that's very really good for Delta and American Airlines. So yeah, it, it depends on the airlines which you go here. Yeah. So how much time it uh, takes to become a captain after you join the industry? Depends on the pilot. So yeah, if you are doing good, uh, you will just uh, keep uh, raising your stars here, like the stars. And yeah, so approximately it will take you six, five, five to seven years if you are good. If you are good, it will, it will take five years. If you are like doing it, seven to ten years. Yeah. But when if you are not captain, uh, how much mm -hmm. one can expect uh, to earn? Yes, five to ten thousand. Okay. Yes. If you have to really fly as a commercial pilot, any airline, how many hours of experience you need of flying? It will be better for you if you uh, like uh, build up fifteen hundred hours. But yes, uh, for becoming a commercial pilot, you will be. You can become a commercial pilot in 200 to 250 hours, flying hours. So how do you get these 200 or 250 hours before you apply for the actual uh, commercial airline? I will have about 180 to 200 hours and after do, uh, I will do normal engine, I will have 200 to 240 flying hours. Wow, okay. So basically yeah. you will cover the basic minimum required hours yeah. here. Yes. And then once you do that, uh, commercial instructor course you will again add on more hours oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, so before you actually start flying you said you can be a commercial pilot instructor mm -hmm. right flight instructor so what is that role exactly uh, after being a commercial pilot you only have 200 to as i said 200 to 45 hours so if you want to build up flying hours so you, you have many ways to do that you can rent a aircraft and do the flight hours or you can just uh, go and do skydiving uh, skydiving aircraft or many many uh, many things are there just a small cargo and you will do the flight hours so most of the pilots will do flight instructor job rather than all of those because you will get to teach others and not more so you will become gradually a better pilot and you will be teaching a new student. So the instructor who I have right now, he was also the student of this physics system. He became instructor and now he's teaching me. So that's uh, how it happened. So after he builds up 1500 hours uh, and he will go for airlines. And when he will be going for airlines, I will be the CPT and I will do the instructor thing. So yeah, so that's how it goes. Okay, understood. How, yeah. Yes, okay. But otherwise, the other ways you said, uh, you know, renting an aircraft and uh, doing a car, I don't think they're cheaper options. Yeah, then uh, definitely not cheaper options. Actually, you can also buy an aircraft and build a flight hour. But that's also things. not cheaper, right? I mean, buying yeah, an aircraft yeah. is not a cheap option. Yeah, man. But the thing is, like, um, renting, you will, you can sell an aircraft after you build up the flight hours. So it will be, like, a, a bit cheaper than that. And then like waiting the aircraft. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's a long way to go. So typically how many years uh, you will take after completing your say 15 months program where you would complete 280 hours to get to say you know 1000 hours or 800 hours how many months you would need? So actually uh, in Japan they don't require that much for the five, uh, five hours because in Japan they don't have a uh, license from any other country so they have low uh, pilot and uh, many aircraft. So yeah, they are said pilot from 200 flight hours. If you have CPL license, they will just hire you. Yeah, so that's why uh, after doing my multi engine, I'm thinking of going back to Japan okay. and joining uh, airlines over there. But right now, is the thing is uh, the, because of the COVID, I don't know how how will it become gradually when I will uh, graduate. So I think I will continue my instructor program here and we look like ours but 
if uh, everything is uh, being good and things are normal, I think I will go back to the Thailand company. Okay, but if yeah. you continue here as an instructor program, mm -hmm. uh, how mm -hmm. how long is your visa valid, F1 visa? Yeah, so actually, uh, being an instructor is being paid from the school. Okay, you will get paid from the school, and for getting paid, you need to have a work permit. So the school will do all of that for you. Okay. So you will be, uh, yeah, so you will get a work permit, and you can work in the school and earn money. Oh, okay, that's interesting. It is OPT man because you can if they are working in the same university where they graduated. So I think they are not working outside. So they are not to work permit. They cannot work everywhere, but they can work in only for the institute. Okay. okay, it's like a research assistant program people do mm -hmm. for the same uh, institute. And they earn money, mm -hmm. so it's like that. You become an instructor with the same institute, and you earn money. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yes. how much do they pay for this kind of a job? If you are a good instructor, you will get a good amount of student. So if you get a good amount of student, it will be good for you. And uh, they earn about two thousand five hundred to two thousand. Okay. So just good enough, I would say, to cover your rental apartment mm -hmm. expenses and your living expenses. Master, uh, for the work permit, yes, if you uh, stay here and you do a type instructor training and for the airlines, yes, they will help you with the work permit, yes. Sir. Okay. Oh, institute helps you for the work permit? Yes. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. So it's like not like a, a normal master students mm -hmm. where, uh, you know, companies yeah. have to sponsor. Here your institute does mm -hmm. it. Okay, that's yeah. good to know. So finishing working, you have to pay again fifteen to sixteen thousand dollars for becoming a flight instructor and to do the flight instructor program training. So with all the money back, but you need it. Some money back. Some amount of money will pay. So it it is a quite an expensive program overall as such, yeah. right? Yes. Like uh, yes. you first have to pay like sixty thousand, and then you know additional multi engine yeah. program you have to pay like ten to fifteen thousand, so kind of seventy five eighty thousand. So you need to have that much uh, in your kitty before you come plan to come here. Are there any physical requirements for this? Like, do you have to go through any physical training for this? Mm, no, no, man. Like, for uh, you need to have a good physics. Uh, you have to go to medical, uh, medical things. So they will check your blood, your everything, uh, your everything, everything. So yeah. Okay, but there is no any physical requirement. I learned a lot of things uh, about this. I am sure there are many inspiring students who want to mm -hmm. pursue this career and they want mm -hmm. to come to US and become commercial pilot, you know, and probably they are holding back because of the money involved. I think it would give them a lot of clarity about this, uh, you know, mm -hmm. entire course, curriculum, how it goes, you know, what are the job prospects. So definitely, um, it's, it's a very glorious field afterwards, right? The pay, mm -hmm. yes. pay scales are very high. It's just an mm -hmm. initial investment. And if somebody has a passion for it, if one has a passion for it, definitely it's worth pursuing. Yes, sir. definitely it's for it. If not US, they can definitely take up a job in any other country, right? Like you said, Japan uh, accepts, uh, you know, commercial pilot license from US mm -hmm. with 200 mm -hmm. plus, uh, you know, flying hours. So they can mm -hmm. choose any other country, even if they do the license here and then again come back to US, you know, mm -hmm. with more flying experience to, you know, become chief pilot or captain, correct? Yes, and so uh, actually, uh, like if you are from uh, uh, India, you it will be very. As I am not planning to go back to Japan, I have to have visa. I can speak Japanese. So if I, if a normal person would like to go to Japan, he have to have his Japanese speaking ability, and he also need to have the visa as well for me. So yes, so yes, US. Uh, uh, there, there is much scope in US also because there are many. They're not only the airlines, you can go into many other things at first and do the flight hours and wait to apply for the airlines. So, yes, uh, like airlines, uh, aviation industry is not like a very small industry, it's like very huge. So, any message for inspiring pilots because uh, it, it's a very difficult journey and expensive course and there are many mm -hmm. people who aspire for it, you know, but they are just taken back because of the requirements that one has to go through, right? Like you said, you need to have so many hours of flying experience and then only you can actually get into the commercial pilot, uh, you know, industry. So, any message for them? Yes, so it's all about the passion we have. So if you have the passion, you feel like you want to fly, you want to go for it, 
So uh, you have to, yeah, you have to look for the money also and everything. But if you really have the passion, you can wait and collect the money for a few years. You can do the hard work and come for your training. So you, I think if you have the passion and everything, just go for it. Don't wait for it, uh, anything. It's one life. So don't regret it. So if I wouldn't do, if I wouldn't do this training in my life, I would regret it so much today. So yeah, I feel like I choose the right path and the field of aviation is very much different from any other thing. I guess you also have uh, a, a real knowledge about metrology because you have to metrology about the weather, about the climate, about everything. You will have a lot of knowledge in your mind. Yes, that's why I think if you want to become a pilot, just go for it and, and always be patient because everything will work out. Okay, absolutely. It is a very specialized field, right? So there will be always a demand for this field, you know, irrespective of whether there's a COVID or not. People do travel, people have to meet their family and friends. And if the distances are far, they have to take a flight. <laughs> <laughs> they cannot drive most of the distances, right? If it's like East Coast to West Coast. So obviously there is a huge demand for this uh, profession. Uh, but thank you for sharing. I'm sure your parents will be very proud to see you, you know, uh, through going through your journey and, uh, you know, seeing you as a commercial pilot. We wish you good luck, Kashik, and all the best. Bye-bye.